What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, I am excited because today we're gonna be starting data structures and algorithms. And I'm excited because I've always wanted to do this course. Like I've been thinking about making a data structures and algorithms course like almost since I first started programming, like I've always wanted to teach data structures and algorithms because I love data structures and algorithms. And um, it's really like, I swear to God, like I just, I'm not just saying that, like it honestly is like a privilege to be out here teaching data structures and algorithms. And I hope you enjoy this course as much as I did making it because I honestly, like I literally hop out of bed 3 a.m. sometimes just so excited to work on this. So, um, this is how this course is going to work, and this is kind of like the warning. You don't need to know all of this to get a junior developer role. Like, I'm a self-taught developer, and I know the struggles of a self-taught developer, so I'm going to distinguish between what you need to know as a junior developer and maybe even a mid-level mid-level developer but i'm also going to go like the full nine yards like we're going to go do st we're going to talk about stuff that is going to get you into microsoft it's going to get you into google and i'm also going to you know teach you how to pass college like if you're a college student too but if you're a junior developer you know if you're trying to get your first job and you're self-taught i'm going to make that distinction so um, just be aware of that and you don't have to learn everything i know the struggles of being self-taught so you know it's it's not a big deal all right, so prerequisite knowledge. You need at least fund. If you don't know anything about programming, you're going to have to take a beginner course beforehand. And I think that just kind of goes without saying. Um, you're also either going to have to know C Sharp or Java. This course is in C Sharp, but C Sharp is so closely related to Java, it's pretty much the same thing. So if you know Java, you could probably get away with it too. Um, I'm going to be using Visual Studio in this and. Um, also, you're going to need to know about classes in object-oriented programming. If, like, if you don't know anything about classes and you don't know anything about object-oriented programming, there's nothing wrong with that, but you're going to be lost a lot in this course. So just prerequisite knowledge and um, would, uh, you know, just be aware of that. Okay, so enough with the introduction, quick introduction. We're going to go ahead, we're going to dive into what every single al algorithm course in Java and C Sharp talks about, and that is the abstract data type. And it's kind of got a intimidating word, like what is at, like abstract data type? And really, there's tons of definitions for this. And everywhere you look online, there's going to be a different definition of what an ADT or what an abstract data type is, but really at the end of the day, an abstract data type is just a class and a good way of thinking about this. And I think this is just goes for programming in general. You have to just think like, what can we really do with computers? Like just think like, you know, I think a good acronym would maybe be CRUD. A lot of people would say CRUD. Cre you can create data, you can read data, and I actually, I'm just gonna put that, now that I just, I actually just thought of that. So CRUD, you know, we can create, read, update, delete data. And I think that that would be a good way to describe like everything that we can do with computers, but we could probably even go a little bit lower than that. And even lower than that would be, we can store data and we can act on data. And whenever you hear the word abstract data type, a lot of times you get this, these, this quote that I'm, I've got right here in, in the PowerPoint is, you have representation and operation. And at the end of the day, list, linked list, queues, stacks, all of these data structures are really just classes that are storing data and acting on data. That's literally all they are. And from that point, we are going to go ahead and we are going to dive into Visual Studio and we are actually going to start working on an, our own abstract data type. And for here, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna create a new project I'm going to create a console app. We don't need any type of any type of fancy framework or anything. You can just create a console app. Uh, make sure C Sharp, Linux, Mac OS. We're going to do this in .NET Core. Um, you could do it in .NET Framework, but 
I suggest .NET Core. Then we're going to go here, and I'm just going to call this algorithms data structures. And you could call this literally whatever you want to. You don't have to. Um, you don't have to copy this word for word. Course 2022. Let's see. Algorithm data structures course 2022. Yeah, call it whatever you want to. It's not a big deal. You could call it test project. Just uh, main thing is, is that I would like you to follow along. You don't have to follow along if you don't want to, but I would like you to. Okay, so we are going to create our own abstract data type we are going to actually <laughs> we are going to represent and operate on our own data and the way that we're going to do that is i'm just going to create a folder i'm going to call this adt once again call this whatever you it's not a big deal um and i'm just going to sequentially organize these folders course by course and data structure and by algorithm and then we're going to go here and I like to be a little bit goofy with my uh, classes. Like I just like to play around and I like to, you know, give things goofy names. And one of the goofy names that I always give like my classes and uh, a lot of my data structures is I just call them Pokemon. And I try to model them after Pokemon types. So if you could put a Pokemon in a computer, just think about that. <laughs> you could put a pokemon in a computer what would the pokemon like how would you you know model this pokemon how would you model uh and sometimes people call it a noun or sometimes people call these things nouns how would you model a pokemon well it really it's up to you you don't have to abide by any rules you could do anything but think about a Pokemon in terms of you're storing Pokemon data and you are acting on Pokemon data. So a Pokemon is going to have a string and it's going to have a name and we're going to have an integer and then we're going to have exp which is going to be experience. And I also am going to have, so this is whenever you boot up a class or whenever you create a class i don't think you're actually booting up a class but whenever you're creating a class this is very fundamental to software development and i never hear anybody explain this to people and I, hopefully this will blow your mind all classes have this same exact shape and this data in this representation that i'm talking about we're going to go back to it this representation and this operation is indicative of this is the representation, and then down here is the, um, we'll just say bull is Pokemon. And this is the operation. So that is kind of an app, that in a sense is what an abstract data type is. And the reason that they call it an abstract data type is because in Stack Overflow, they give the book to telephone book analogy and a pokemon is an almost like an abstraction in itself because you actually have individual pokemon you don't just uh whenever you create your pokemon you know it, in theory your pokemon data structure what you're going to go in, what you're going to do is you're going to declare this data structure you're going to call it a specific Pokemon because the Pokemon is the abstraction of the actual Pokemon that you're going to create and you're going to new this Pokemon up just like that and that's the reason that they call it an abstract data type is because this is the abstraction and this is the actual concrete implementation and they call it the abstraction because it's represent representative of all the Pokemon. And that's kind of the beauty of classes. And that's the beauty of abstract data types. So you may be wondering, well, why, you know, I see where you're going with this, Teddy. But why do, why do they always have this included in the beginning of, uh, you know, algorithm courses? And that is because, let's just say, a stack. And this is this is actually built into the Microsoft language. And if you look at this, this stack 
is literally no different from the Squirtle. Like the the stack is like the exact same thing. It's representation of it's representation of data, and then it's operation of data. And if we go into our stack, it's literally the same thing. And I'm doing this by uh, clicking go to definition, and then I go into it, and it's literally the same thing. You have um, representations of data and then you have act people actually acting on data and how can you tell like this is a constructor so don't even worry about this but how can you tell the difference these are functions you are acting on the data you are acting on the squirtle name in this one you're you know you're acting on this data you're manipulating this data within this class and this class is logically storing data for you you could I guess in theory, you could just go in here and have all of your data just stored down in the program CS, but we don't do that because classes are almost like drawers for data. And a good analogy of this is when I was a, a kid, we had, my dad had a really nice, like a really nice toolbox. And if you touched anything in my dad's toolbox and you didn't put uh, any, you know, stuff back in my dad's toolbox, he would literally come home and he would start yelling at you because that's, you know, that's all his, all his tools are in there. And that's kind of what you want to think about as a class. A class is, you know, where we house all of our data in logical places. And we do that simply because we want to know where our properties are at. Just like my dad wants to know where his tools are at. And we could have just variable name and we could just you know store everything in here in the actual program cs file but that would become unwieldy so that's the reason that we make classes that's the reason why we put everything inside of abstract data types and classes is because we need a place where we can logically house the data and represent them and act on them in ways that don't get unwieldy and just having variables strewn throughout your program so that is abstract data types i hope that was, that was a good explanation for you guys. And the next video, we're going to move on to big O notation and we're going to get this thing going and you guys are going to become algorithm masters. Smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.